Thank you very much. I guess you're taking questions outside in the AMA yep. in the foyer. Yeah, but I also don't want to remove anybody from the next speaker. So I'll take questions at the break. Cool. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, cool. So as a short announcement, we found a driver's license. So if you're missing a driver's license, please let me know, and you can pick it up. Uh, that's the one thing. And then we have our next speaker, Peter, who will talk about replace the system. Nice. So, um, hi everyone. Um, I first wanted to thank uh, all the all the speakers, workshop, and uh, hackerspace hosts, uh, and um, everyone else that came here to discuss. Uh, Thanks for responding to the to the invitation, um, and I hope during the next few days we'll be able to work together, uh, figure out how we can better collaborate with each other, um, and uh, and generally push the space uh, forward. So, during the next uh, 30 minutes, uh, I would like to touch upon what is the what is the substance of Web3, and uh, and propose a framework that, that can help us better structure thinking about what is, uh, what is Web3 and what actually needs to uh, be built. So we came here to, um, to replace some of, the, some of the centralized systems that are out there and some of the centralized applications that are out there. We want to build decentralized applications that will allow us to do some of the, uh, some of the, the same things or some of new things. And what are those decentralized applications that, that we want to build? So if you think about it, what? great. If you think about it, we need to, first of all, make sure that, that we provide great user experience and functionality. This is what makes it a good application. But at the same time, in order, in order to make it a decentralized app, we need to maintain certain decentralized qualities of this, uh, of this application, and which I will talk about later. And in order to illustrate, uh, I will focus on an example of ride sharing. It's, not, uh, it's, an, it's a simple example, but one that has enough complexity to, to illustrate my points. Uh, and with ride sharing, the, the functionality is that uh, a user has to be able to easily uh, order a ride with their phone. There has to be an app on their phone. Uh, the rider and the driver has to be have to be pleasant to each other thanks to some sort of reputation system. The payment has to be issued very as smoothly as possible upon the completion of the ride. So, and all of it has to be as easy and as pleasant as possible in order to make a good application. Right. So, but in order to make it a, into a decentralized application, uh, we need to change how it works currently. So currently, all the, all the services will be provided by a central party that, that handles um, every single part of that particular application. If we want to have a decentralized application, we need to conform to certain, certain constraints. So first of all, no party can be privileged over other parties a priori. So um, when we build the app, we cannot put a single party that will act uh, and, and fulfill a certain service forever. No trust between peers is required. The protocol defines and enforces the rules. And available roles are clearly defined. Let's see how it works with, with this ride-sharing example. So for instance, in, in ride-sharing, we have matching. We have to match a driver to a rider when, when, when a ride is requested. So. Um, this, this role currently is performed by a centralized party. But uh, that party can say, tell, for instance, the driver, hey, you need to pay me a certain amount in order to get selected. So we, we want this role to be clearly defined. And we, we want it to be defined in such a way so that, so that anyone can perform it. And drivers and riders don't have to trust the matching party uh, when they do the matching, because the protocol enforces that, that it's actually done in an in a optimal way. 
similarly for reputation. So currently it's being held by a central party and all the logic to kind of process this reputation is held by a central party. But now we want it to be held by a decentralized network of nodes and, uh, and not allow any, any single party to control it. So to summarize, all the services should be provided by parties fulfilling clear sets of criteria determined by transparent protocols instead of this one central party in the previous example. But building those decentralized applications is really hard right now. So you have to deliver this, this great functionality, user experience, and so on. And you have to maintain those decentralized qualities. Um, and if you want to do it, currently it requires a lot of work. So you need to build everything from scratch or from low-level components. Uh, and oftentimes you spend most of your time building, building those, uh, those low-level components. And in order to see more applications, decentralized applications out there and actually see useful applications out there, we need to make this development easy. And the way we do it in, um, in normal software engineering or in any other case when we build an application is we try to uh, uh, build components and tools that, that, uh, that make it easier for developers so that it can be reused. Currently, all of them are, of course, centralized, but that, that are available for building dApps. But uh, in, th in, this, in this new space, we have a lot, of, a lot of things are already being built. So there is a lot of components out there. But uh, they're all very, very disjointed. Uh, in order to better coordinate ourselves, we need some sort of framework that will allow us to, uh, to better see how they fit together. And this is the, the Web3 technology stack that I will be talking about. So let us start from the, from the top, from the, from the user. So we want the user to, to make use uh, of this application. Uh, this application has to be somehow delivered to the user. Currently, the way it's usually done is, is using some sort of a browser that delivers this, this application. And then this browser has to also allow the, the DAP that we built to access the underlying protocols in order to provide its decentralized functionality. So this is the first component. Then underneath are the actual elements that allow a DAP builder to make the application. There are tools that make the development easier and allow the one to bring the necessary components for that application. APIs that plug into the underlying protocols in order to provide the centralized functionality. And languages that allow developers to specify more complex functionality that has to be executed by the underlying protocols, such as smart contracts. Then underneath, we have the actual protocols. So usually, we split them up into layer one protocols and layer two. So layer two protocols rely with some of their functionality or, on, or security on layer one protocols. Layer one delivers three main capabilities, zero trust interactions, data distribution, and transient messaging. So um, the, the zero trust interaction protocols, usually those are the, the blockchains or DAOs, or DAGs, sorry, uh, are, are, the, uh, are the elements that uh, allow us to process the logic that would be normally processed in a, in a trusted data center. So things like reputation in our case or, or payment. Um, currently, however, there, is, there, there are a lot of problems with having many of those blockchains and DAGs. So uh, we think that, that a shared security platform for all of those is crucial for the development of, uh, of the centralized space, because otherwise they will remain disconnected and, uh, and not interoperable. So this is why we have this middle piece in the, in the layer one. Then we have data distribution protocols. These allow to distribute static assets, such as images or, um, uh, or text for, for that particular application. Or built on top of them can be databases and more complex structures. And then messaging. So for instance, in our ride-sharing example, we, we want to have an ability to issue a, a message that is transient. For instance, the, the, the rider, when they order the ride, they want to broadcast the message to all the online drivers. And this message shouldn't persist. Then we go to la layer two. Uh, these, these protocols augment or extend the capabilities of layer one protocols. 
We have state channels that, in certain conditions, can improve throughput of transactions and lower an overhead, for instance, for, to, for the rider to pay to the driver. Uh, oracles that can provide real-world data to the applications. In our case, it may be GPS coordinates uh, of the driver. And encrypted storage that can provide privacy to, uh, uh, to those solutions, such as keeping the contact details of the driver uh, secure. There are many other second layer protocols that make it easier to build decentralized applications or even sometimes just possible. Um, usually, uh, layer one protocols build every, everything underneath from scratch. But recently, we've seen that, that uh, certain components can be broken down there as well. So uh, peer to peer internet overlay can allow, allow different protocols on top to, to form connections to other nodes and exchange messages on a P2P network. And, uh, and a platform neutral computation description language can be used in order to describe things that has to have to be executed reliably by different nodes. So things like verifying smart contracts, verifying blockchains, or heavy computation. Now, we are, we are uh, as Web3 Foundation, we are talking to around 100 different projects. But, and a lot of them are building components that contribute to this overall tech stack. But now I will go through, through 30 projects that are here at the summit in order to better understand how they all fit together and where we are at. So, starting from the, from the bottom of the stack, a, a, a networking framework that has recently gained traction is lip P2P. Uh, it already Polkadot, IPFS, and a new messaging protocol that we are uh, supporting uh, are making use of it. And um, it, uh, we hope that it's flexible enough for many different projects to be able to not build their, their uh, networking from scratch, but actually make use of lip 2 p Then we have the computation description language. A new standard that emerged in the web space is WebAssembly. And uh, by making it's it's in itself is very fast and portable, and by making a few changes to make it deterministic, is a perfect candidate for the decentralized space in order to to describe computations. And many projects are already making use of it, and we hope that this trend will continue. Then we we move on to the actual layer one protocols. Uh, there is a lot of them that provide many different characteristics. So we have, for instance, Blink that provides low latency uh, transactions, Tezos that makes it easy to formally verify smart contracts, Ethereum that is, of course, the original platform that drives a lot of the current uh, uh, applications with their smart contracts, um, um, Agoric that is building a, a new chain that, that would allow s uh, to one to write safer smart contracts, um, and energy web chain that, that works on making uh, blockchain for the energy sector. And uh, so as we see, there, there are many of those chains that provide interesting capabilities. But uh, especially the more we have of them, the harder it will be to provide the security of each of those chains and also make sure that they can all interoperate with each other and be actually useful to the, to the user. So. Uh, due to that, we are supporting development of the Polkadot protocol that uh, allows to, uh, us to connect many of the current solutions, but also, also makes it easy to develop new chains uh, that, that will be able to share security and communicate with each other. And this is really crucial if we, if we, want, to, if we want to have all those different capabilities that, that are, in the end, useful to developers. Um, then we have the data distribution protocols. There are many of them, like Torrent or GAN. Here at the summit, we have IPFS that has been used by many decentralized applications already. But we hope it gets better, even better integrated into existing tool chains for, for developers to make uh, its use easy. Then the final piece in, the, in layer one is the, is the messaging. So at the beginning of Ethereum, we had, uh, we had a Whisper protocol was proposed to make it easy for, for uh, dub developers to, to use, make use of messaging. It hasn't been developed since much since then. 
and uh, recently we uh, we started dev uh, to to work on the on the next iteration of of Whisper that would actually bring it uh, to developers. And you can hear more about it on Wednesday uh, in a joint talk with Validity Labs. Uh, then we have Orchid that is working uh, on a replacement for uh, I2P or Tor. And uh, Matrix that currently provides a federated uh, uh, solution, uh, but has also decentralization in its roadmap. Now let's go to the, to the layer two. So Chainlink makes it easy to, uh, to uh, uh, provide, uh, to deploy and, and create decentralized oracles. Ocean works on curation markets for data sets. Brainbot uh, makes it, uh, works on solutions that will allow us to increase throughput of, uh, um, of uh, low trust uh, protocols. And then we have Yolocom that is working on, on identity solutions for the, for the decentralized web. Uh, then we get to the, the tools and the things that actually enable developers to build. Clover is working on ways to make it easier to deploy, uh, to deploy blockchain nodes and also uh, make it more accessible to enterprises. Agoric is very working on a, on, a wor on a version of JavaScript that, uh, that uh, would make writing smart contracts, uh, save smart contracts easier. Parity team that is here is adapting Rust, making a DLSL that would make smart contracts writing also easy. Uh, Polkascan is a project that aims to be a blockchain explorer that can explore many different chains uh, that are out there. And we, of course, have Web3.js that makes it easy to build uh, apps currently on the Ethereum network. And then there are browsers, Brave, Status, and Speckle. Uh, all of them are trying to, to bring the application to the user, but still many of them don't integrate into many underlying protocols, which makes writing full-featured dApps pretty hard. Um, so we've seen that there are, there, is, uh, there are many different projects that are building different components, and there are many more. Uh, but, but there are still certain issues that, uh, and, uh, that impede our, our progress towards, uh, towards our goals. Uh, so looking at this stack, uh, we can see there are some missing pieces or pieces that are less worked on, especially the pieces that are harder to monetize. Things like messaging or tools uh, haven't seen that much development. Uh, the development of different projects is very siloed. So uh, people build uh, different projects, build things from scratch, uh, and that can result uh, with, with components of the, of the solutions being subpar or often extending the time, their timelines a lot. And a lot of the, those protocols are not very usable. Uh, they are not designed, for instance, with feasible light clients in mind that make it impossible in the end to use those things on, on user devices. Uh, so what can we do? What can we do about it? Um, so looking, look, looking at this tech stack, I think, I think it makes it uh, a bit easier to pick up pick up the missing components. So there is still a lot of stuff to be built, and, and there is lots of projects focusing on certain components of it, but not on others. Uh, look around for good technology. So uh, many projects have already built, especially the lower level components of the, of the tech stack. And uh, it's uh, make sure to either approach them or, uh, or, 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 or read up on, on their technologies. And uh, there is really a lot of stuff to be, uh, to be uh, used there. Make it easy for others to build on your technology. So this not only makes it possible for you to accelerate your development roadmap, but also brings more developers into your ecosystem and improves the quality of the, of the elements that, uh, that you've built. And communicate more about how your project fits into this tech stack. So see what, what elements are underneath, which elements you can rely on, and which elements will be above and can rely on your solution in order to, uh, to build uh, the things that they want to build. And uh, this will make it much easier for others to, again, identify when they should be picking up the things that, that you've built. So what do we, as the, as the Web3 Foundation, do to push those uh, things forward? So first of all, first of all we, we want to be the platform for projects to discuss and connect. So 
we set up this this Web3 Summit to um, to really help people understand how how those different components fit uh, with each other and discuss how uh, how they can better collaborate or align their technological roadmaps in order to to get to to this decentralized web faster. We organize workshops on different crucial topics. So we organize a workshop on scaling, called Scaling Now, on intermediate, uh, on uh, immediate scaling solutions, on chain governance workshops, on uh, on methods to govern those new decentralized networks, um, Oracle ne uh, workshop to figure out what is the state of the art of bringing real world data to the blockchain, and the centralized exchanges workshop. Uh, we also try to facilitate connections between projects. Uh, we, uh, uh, we try to figure out how their technological roadmaps fit, where do they fit in the, in the, in the overall tech stack, and, uh, and uh, yeah, help them figure out how to deliver uh, on, their, on, the, on their goals. Um, we support development through funding uh, of uh, development of uh, both protocols, tooling, and also uh, different educational resources. Um, we push the research forward, so uh, we, we work on different different uh, important topics that still still are open in the space, but also provide primitives for uh, for others to make use of in different protocols. Uh, we have both an in-house research team and collaborate externally. And through all those different efforts, we are trying to, to build, uh, build this community. Um, so at the end, I just wanted to mention uh, how, how you can actually directly, pragmatically interact with us. Uh, um, so either collaborate directly. So uh, we are looking for uh, research teams, development teams that would help to develop the, the elements that we think are still, uh, still missing. Um, we want to work with the centralized app and protocol projects and, and uh, help you figure out how the, the stuff that you are building uh, fits uh, in, into, this, uh, into this decentralized space. Or join our team directly. So we are looking for, for people for our in-house research team that would work on um, algorithms, cryptography, formal methods, um, and people for collaboration building, comms and community and operations. So I hope that uh, that gives you a, this framework gives you a bit of a sense how um, how you can better interact with with different projects in this space and and uh, and um, inspires you a bit to to collaborate with others and see that there is still a lot of stuff that we need to pull together and build in order to to del deliver this uh, decentralized web. So thanks a lot. <laughs>